praise the Lord to everyone. We give the Lord praise. Tonight, we, uh, we give our hearts over to you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that we uh, would just be allowed to participate in your word tonight, that as you speak through this word, that the Holy Spirit will participate with us tonight as we seek to hear your will, as you direct us, as you fine tune us with your word. And so we're appreciative we're appreciative for what we have tonight. We pray that you would bless your people, everyone, everywhere who's participating tonight. Give us the clarity as we seek the things that you have for us, that you have planned for us in this moment, in eternity before time. We thank you and we say in the name of Jesus, we say amen and amen. Uh, the Lord bless you. We appreciate you on tonight. Um, we want you to, um, just as we kind of pick up from where we left off, uh, we have been in this conversation, uh, the common life of the uncommon community, and we've been in this conversation for several weeks. Uh, I think it's important uh, that, that we, we really embrace, that we examine I mean, the very, the very DNA of what it means to be the ecclesia, uh, the church. Um, and so as God's called out ones, as we spoke on Sunday, uh, those who are living in this uh, duality of existence, where even again tonight, uh, we are seated at home, uh, we're seated in various places, but at the same time, we are also seated in heavenly places, uh, uh, in Christ Jesus. So we're seated together. And because we are uh, living this duality, this, this glorious duality, I'll call it, where we have a vibrant life in the spirit and we have vibrant life here on earth uh, as we have been animated, enlivened, born again, reborn, uh, the new creation, it's, it's critical that we examine uh, scripture uh, to really exemplify and allow the Holy Spirit, allow the Holy Ghost to do uh, what he wants to do in our lives, that God may be glorified. Um, as we go to Acts 2, uh, beginning in verse number 42, 42 through 47, as I said, this is kind of the thesis statement uh, for the church. Uh, I, I'm impressed by the fact it is it is on me the benefit of God's word that we have in our generation, uh, in our time, in our context, in our country. Uh, we have Bibles. Most of us have multiple 
Bibles, the one we keep home, the one we carry, uh, a little, a little small pocket Bibles. We have them, most of us, uh, on, on whatever um, device that we might have. We even have the Bible there. We have access to Scripture. And it is a blessing because when we read God's Word, we hear His voice. We have the blessing, the privilege of having uh, the record of God's intentions towards us. Um, I was just sharing recently uh, when in, uh, in China uh, under uh, Mao Zedong, when Christianity was illegal and they, they uh, threw out all of the foreign uh, missionaries and preachers and uh, they were killing uh, the, the native Chinese um, ministers and in order to stamp out Christianity. And that is when uh, Christianity really proliferated in China. Um, it grew exponentially under persecution. And one, there is, and, and I'm going I'm, uh, I'm have to research and, and, and uh, look in my uh, archives, like I actually have archives, uh, look and get the name of the woman, but she is a, a Pentecostal uh, believer who, because it was illegal, they didn't have Bibles, so they, uh, the people that were uh, gathering in homes and sharing in secret at the threat of death in their basements, they would tear out pages of the Bible and they wouldn't even have entire Bibles. And this woman led hundreds of people to the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and she had a page from the book of John. The power of God's word, and when we approach it with faith and allowing God's word to do it's work in our life. Uh, it is uh, a privilege and a blessing that we have more than a page. Uh, we have so much more. So as we're approaching tonight by faith, I want you to appreciate the benefit that we have, the privilege uh, that we have uh, to be where we are, uh, to, to be able to possess God's word. And, uh, you know, in this country, uh, hundreds of years ago, it would have been wrong for somebody with uh, the concentration of uh, my melanin to even be able to read. Uh, we are blessed uh, by the Lord. Not only is he blessing us, we live in a blessed culture. We live in a blessed context. There are things that we take for granted in this life uh, that people in other parts of the world can't even imagine. Uh, and I've said this to you before, but by the standards of the world, we are all considered wealthy. Uh, so the fact that we're here tonight, even in this venue, this is a reason to give God praise. Uh, so in Acts uh, chapter number two, we've been going through this over and over again. Um, <clears throat> we are the new creation uh, in the old world, and this church itself, the ecclesia, is something that the world uh, has not seen anything like it. There are uh, uh, duplicates and, and, and mimics of what the Church of Christ is, but it cannot be, um, it, is, it is truly uh, this form of godliness, but denying the power. So we are God's church, and there were four things we focused on, right? That they continued, uh, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, uh, in the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and in the prayers. And, and I'm just dealing with that section there uh, because those four aspects you will see as you continue to read uh, continue to unfold again. The uh, They had all things in common is a, a another, it's the outworking of the koinonia, the fellowship where we are today. So in these four aspects of the early life, the, the four aspects of the church was they, they continued in the teaching. They devoted themselves to becoming uh, what was being taught as, as Christ was the incarnation of God. So it is his disciples. We are the incarnation of the gospel. We are in flesh the teaching uh, of our Savior Jesus. We are uh, becoming. Discipleship is a life's pursuit. It's not an Intellectual pursuit, per se, it doesn't stay in the mind. It has to be walked out. And so the, the teaching, the fellowship or the koinonia, the breaking of bread and the prayers. And we've been in the fellowship, the koinonia, this, 
this fresh new community, this new way of relating one to another. The, the koinonia deals, um, it, it's interesting, this whole idea of koinonia as it is understood uh, in, 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 its, in its earliest context. Um, as, as they talked about individual rights, koinonia also has a strong sense of duty of the individual uh, to the society. And so when, uh, when Luke uses this term, he's, he's familiar uh, with its classic use. He understands now is this idea of being related one to another closer than it's, it's a phrase used of family. And so as the Holy Spirit comes, we are now connected to one another in a, in a completely different way, in an intense way where we live uh, in light of others around us. And this is, this is critical because we're, we're taught to pray together. We are uh, uh, to touch and agree. We are, uh, we are taught to strong to bear the infirmities of the weak. A huge portion of the New Testament is relationship driven. Uh, and so this is, this, this is important for us to really ingest, I, I mean, within our life to, to run on the very, our, our core, our engine has to, to be fueled by the life uh, that Jesus has called us to, he's called us to him and called us to one another. One of the interesting things that we, we've been dealing with over the last couple of weeks in Galatians, uh, we kind of pointed out the truth that now, uh, okay, six of the nine fruits of the Spirit are relationship fruits. They are, um, they don't manifest outside of relationship. And as I was kind of just thinking on and, and meditating on some things earlier this week, as this was kind of going over my mind, we kind of established uh, uh, months ago that every relationship is created by God. Every relationship. He is a relational God. Uh, to the point where uh, when man is created, God looks at man and says, it's not good that man is alone. And he created Eve so that the two would be one uh, and they would now be fruitful uh, and multiply and replenish the earth. Since man is made in the likeness and image of God, it is the duty of man. It is, it is the, in the original uh, 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 owner's manual, if I can use that kind of term. It's in uh, that the prime objective was for man uh, to replenish uh, the earth. And that replenishing of the earth would be since uh, man is made in the likeness and image of God, that the glory of God, the image of God would be throughout the world. And so this image, he ties together in relationship. He says, okay, uh, Adam, I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I'm going to bring you a helper that is meet for you, so a, a helper that is suitable. And the two of you together, the two will be one. And this is your mission uh, to glorify me. And so here it is right at the beginning. Uh, God creates relationship. Also, uh, in Genesis, we find uh, God giving man the highest compliment that he could give. Uh, when they were building what we know, we call it, it was the Tower of Babel. Uh, and, and a lot of uh, theologians, historians believe that they it probably, it was some attempt uh, to, uh, so their name would not, remember what they said, so that our name won't be wiped from the earth. They tried to build something high, almost like a mountain to make them flood proof. And God looks down and says, let us go down and confound their language because the people are of, of one language, they're one mind. He said, whatever they put uh, their minds to do, they're going to accomplish it. That is a high compliment when we operate in unity, when we are operating in relationship. And so man is scattered at this point uh, and he scatters man uh, by dividing their language. Notice then on the day of Pentecost, he unifies us by giving us language. And so as, as now we, we see 
uh, of the power of the Holy Ghost in this unifying factor as the people of God, we've got to know that the enemy will work in relationships. He will frustrate the move of God through the people of God if we are at odds. Uh, and I'm I'm kind of I'm I'm I'm, a, I'm digressing a little bit, uh, but I'm still uh, I'm moving uh, down another street, but I'm still headed west, uh, and, and that's where we're going. Do you remember when in the book of Acts, uh, when it was Paul and Barnabas were together, and they and the Bible says they had no small disagreement. Uh, and the conclusion of it was, and it was over John Mark, because at, at another time, uh, uh, Mark had, he had deserted them. And Paul was like, I'm not trying to take Mark with us on any missionary journeys, because when things get bad, Mark is going to bail. And, and then we find this now in Timothy, when Paul is writing to Timothy, and he, he talks about the times he was deserted by uh, uh, Demas. But even in that writing, he recommends that he bring John Mark with him because I've found him useful. So John Mark got it together uh, towards uh, somewhere in Paul's journey and John Mark's journey. And I love that story because it tells all of us uh, there is always room to be better. Thank God for getting better. Um, and so what happens when they have this dispute? Notice what they do. It was... Paul, who now took Silas and Barnabas took John Mark and they continued to do the work of the Lord. They said, this is what we cannot do. We cannot let, and remember it says there was, they had no small disagreement. Uh, we cannot let what is going on with us. They are mature enough, even though they did not agree to salvage uh, relationship. And clearly they stayed connected because Paul reached for John Mark uh, at the end of his life. So uh, they didn't blow the relationship up, but they said, we can't let this disagreement get in the way of what is key. And that is the work of the Lord. And so Barnabas uh, uh, took John Mark, uh, Paul took Silas, and they went their different ways, but continued to do the work of the Lord. What the enemy will do is he will, he will cause friction in uh, sometimes the silliest places. He will fight in relationship. And, and I mean, even Monday, as I was thinking about this, about guarding our connections, because the enemy is after the progression of the gospel. He's after the work of the kingdom through the people of God. And so he will frustrate relationships. And I would say this to you, uh, children of God, when, when even when your most intimate relationships are going through, uh, you realize the pain and the frustration it will cause when there is uh, fragmenting in relationships your moods changed, dispositions changed. And so uh, the, the, the Holy Ghost is teaching us to live together, how to live together so that God will be glorified. So not only that he will be glorified, uh, but when God is glorified, the glory of God is the best thing for us. God's will being done is the absolute best thing that could happen to us. It is our health is better. We are physically better. We are mentally uh, better when we are operating in the design of uh, uh, our maker and that we live in harmony, that we are one and that he's being glorified. So then as love is our brand, because our relationships are how we're going to be known, how we love uh, is powerful for those who come around us. I wanted to examine today just for a few minutes, and we're not going to get to all of them, not going to even try. Um, as we're still in, they continued in fellowship, koinonia. There's a lot packed into that. And so we have the Holy Ghost. So we now have the Spirit now uh, who has made us uh, connected, has made us one in Christ. And so now we are united by the blood of Jesus and by the Spirit. And so in the koinonia, all kinds of things have to go on. Needs have to be met. There's, uh, there's services that go on. Uh, uh, when uh, when uh, Sister Oliver was praying, she was talking about uh, some of the different functions uh, in the church. And, and, and there, there, are, there are functions to come and a, a re-engineering of some things uh, that we're doing to keep us moving 
uh, at a pace that we need to move. And so in all of these things, as it relates to um, the uh, the gospel uh, being spread uh, to the um, needs of the community being filled, the faith community, and being connected to those who are not part of the faith community. All of these things are going on at the, at the same time. And so the fruit of the spirit that we talked about, those, those uh, love and, and gentleness, all of these things, long suffering, all have to be in place. And in this, the first fruit of the Spirit is love. It's love. Love. I, I want to, let's go to um, 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13. Um, it says, if I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and I'm reading from uh, the ESV, the English Standard Version. Uh, the scripture says that uh, um, if I speak in terms of men and a, uh, of men and angels, but I don't have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I'm nothing. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 5 start to talk about what love is. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. King James Version says charity, but it's, it's, it's the Greek word agape. It's, it's the word love. Um, love does not envy or boast. Love, it's not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. Doesn't rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. The love we are speaking about here Love, love is a verb. Love is uh, a, a response, a set of actions. Love performs. It is, it is a performance. It's not this lofty platitude, oh, uh, I love you, um, and there's no action behind it. The love of God performed. The love of God was shown to us not only in God taking on the form of a servant, dying for our sins, getting up on the third day, uh, and, and sending back the Holy Ghost uh, to us, but the enduring ministry of the Holy Ghost and his love continues to perform in the grace that we experience, in the peace uh, that we experience. It, the love of God is performing, it is, it is doing for us. Therefore, love, as it is just, uh, talked about here, it's not so much what love is, it deals more with what love does, the performing love. And that, that's what we need. We, we need a love that is performing. If it's the, the first fruit of the Spirit is love, we, we get to discuss then what love looks like, what what, how does love perform? What does love do? Well, there are a couple of things. Uh, it talks about some of the fruits of the Spirit moves on, but he's, he says love is patient. This is how love performs. And patient means to delay wrath or hold back punishment. Um, that idea of the patience of love, that love 
uh, reserves. You remember we talked about the fruits of the spirit when we talked about how uh, it is in the fruit of the spirit that how that long suffering is one who can avenge themselves, but does not. Love then, how does love perform? Love performs because as we as believers know, the grace of God that we have experienced. And so we are walking out the kind of love that was shown to us, to others. That because we have received grace uh, and mercy, we can show mercy to others and create that atmosphere of, of grace. This is, this is one of the things that I share and, and, and that we've got to understand. When we are forgiven, not only is it the forensic, the legal act of being forgiven, the act of Jesus on the cross, uh, uh, the, the work then uh, by uh, the one offering the forgiveness, the work is on their end. The one receiving it uh, does no work. Uh, it, is, it is incumbent upon it because we didn't do anything to be forgiven. Jesus did it all. But not only are we forgiven, and I've, I've said this before, but once we are forgiven, what Jesus does for us is create an atmosphere whereby we can enjoy the state of being forgiven. And, and, and so it is with the children of God that we live towards one another in a way, aware of the grace that we have received, giving that grace for others. It, it is a scripture that tells us there is therefore now no condemnation uh, to those of us who are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. It is no condemnation. There is no death sentence. The penalty uh, uh, for us who walk after the spirit is with hell, the punishment. And that's what he says here when he talks about uh, love being um, uh, patient, love being patient. There is a delay. There is a holding back. Love is kind. How does love behave? How does love perform? Love performs in kindness, warm-heartedness, considerate, and sympathetic. There are various translations that will bring out nuances in um, the Greek language of the original word of how love performed. What does it look like when you are loved? Well, uh, one, one of the things is that love is, is kind. It is, it is a useful sympathy. It is considerate. Love is considerate. Love has manners. Um, love believes in an environment, in relationships where uh, others are made to feel comfortable. And so when we have this kind of life where this performance of of the wrath being held back, when we have this kind of uh, performance where um, not only uh, are as wrath delayed, uh, we have this uh, kind of, uh, um, of, of considerate sympathy one for another, the kindness of love, the kindness of love. So when love performs, love is warm hearted. Love is considerate. So one being loved, does not feel uh, the, the heat of anger. Uh, one being loved does not feel coldness and apathy, uh, but one being loved uh, realizes uh, and experiences the considerate behavior of one loving. Love, he says, is not envious. That, that being to painfully desire another's advantages. Love is not a competition. And so the behavior of love, the, the behavior of love, the performance of love, as, as scripture is laying out for us, how love performs this experience of love, that patient and kindness, 
where it talks about love not being arrogant or rude. It doesn't insist on its own way. Uh, it is uh, not irritable or resentful, doesn't rejoice at, at wrongdoing. How love bears all. When love, when we are performing, there is an atmosphere where we are pulling one for another. And as believers in Christ, to maintain the relationships, to create this kind of environment where now the spirit of God flows. When we, be, when uh, you, you know, they talk about this thing and our educators will, will get this and, and they will understand this, this concept of, of children uh, when, when, when the teacher, when the instructor expects, has expectations of a student. Even students that aren't performing that kind of way, when they sense that, listen, they, they don't care for me, they have no expectation for me, the performance of the student is higher when there is loving expectation of the instructor or the teacher. When they, listen, I, I'm, I'm expecting you to, I believe you can get this, that when, when there is an atmosphere in the Holy Spirit where uh, we are serving, where we are loving, where we are, I mean, cheering for one another. The gifts, uh, not only of, of the Spirit, but now, uh, uh, not, not the fruit of the Spirit, when the fruit of the Spirit is active, now the gifts of the Spirit start to make themselves visible because the gifts now participate in building up the whole. And when we have the mind of Christ, when we have a heart of love, when, when, we are, when we are after kindness, when we are after the long suffering, when we seek to advantage one another, now the Holy Spirit releases gifts because we are good stewards of the giftings of God, knowing that the gifts will be employed for the benefit of all and for the moving forward of the kingdom of God. This is, th this is a, a uh, uh, really a snapshot of, as, as Paul is teaching in Corinthians, when he's telling the Corinthian church, he says, you all are desiring these gifts. He said, and seek for the greater gifts. He said, but at the end uh, of 12, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 31, he says, but I'm going to show you an even more excellent way. So he says it's great, and, and the thing was is everybody wanted to prophesy. They wanted these uh, premier gifts. He said that, that's good uh, that you're, you want spiritual things. He said, but I'm going to show you something even greater. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unfold a mystery for you. If you can do all of this and don't love, you are useless. And so I, I don't know about y'all. I want to be useful to God. I want to be useful uh, to you uh, and our families. We want to be useful one to another. And the essence of love is a love that is performing, that is useful one for another. And, and when, we, when we contend for this, when, when, we, when we fight for a, a, a culture that is loving and uh, not uh, judging, even as we have unbelievers uh, coming in amongst us, we will, we will see people from various lifestyles uh, and, and, and looking in ways that maybe we were not brought up. Uh, I, as a kid coming up in church there, I was, uh, you know, th thanks to Aunt Evelyn, I was, I, was, I was decked in the finest that Zare had to offer. Uh, however, there are individuals, uh, as I got a few of y'all with that, th there are individuals, we have, uh, we are multiple generations of people deep who, who do not own uh, suits, uh, neckties, dress shoes. The, this is not, uh, you know, uh, when when they when they're popular clubs. You you've seen it in the movies. You've seen it on TV shows uh, that there's somebody letting somebody in if they don't think you're you're dressed good enough. If they don't think you they won't let you in. This is not that. We are the loving family of God that as people come to us, we have to, because God loved us where we were, uh, loved us where we were. I'm, I'm a witness that God loved me where I was. And, and what, what, how do we have a chance? How does the Holy Spirit have a chance if people want to be near us, but we are rejecting them for other reasons? Listen, once people get saved, then we deal with the issues of discipleship. But as they are coming, 
that love they got to feel. Oh, because people will give you excuses. Why well, don't have anything to wear to church? And every last one of you have told an individual to come as you are. Just come. Let the Holy Spirit do the work. Let them walk in and see what love means. Let, let, let them feel, see love performing around us. What the world is missing is love. We are in uh, seeing people in relationships, in families that do not know love from siblings or parents. Do uh, every kind of love, or whether it's a uh, filio's love or eros love, has been uh, this market based transaction where if there's nothing valuable, they don't receive love. Let people experience the love of God through us. And this is what the heart of love is this performing love. Whereas people are coming and broken, there's no uh, turning our nose up. Uh, love is not arrogant. That's, that's one of the words that says it doesn't turn up his nose or assume that it is better than. Uh, are you hearing me today? Love does not demonstrate itself in uh, this sense that we are better than others. God, we are uh, earthen vessels. The treasure is in us, an earthen vessel, that the excellency may be of God and not of us. Now, I don't know if some of y'all uh, fully understand the earthen vessel was, is this, uh, the term is this clay pot. And, and what is so significant about the clay pot is the clay pot was basically the bedpan. It, it was used for that kind of stuff. Paul is graphic when he's telling them, we we have a treasure in a toilet so the value can only point to God and not to us. If you ever forget that you're a clay pot, you've missed it. What, what is excellent about us is the spirit in us. And so appreciating other clay pots that are coming through the door, that are yearning to be filled, that God has used us as uh, a, a connection point, this place of reconciliation. And so the heart of love the heart of love. Love is what we must contend for. The love of God, that kind of love that performs, the kind of love that withholds wrath, the kind of love that is sympathetic, that love does not look at others, judge, but love looks at others with soft eyes. It's one of the terms for gentleness with, with, with soft eyes, with looking at them and saying, I, I know one thing years ago, uh, I, was, I was frustrated uh, by the uh, behavior or performance of someone. And I remember my wife saying to me, would you want to be them? Boom, sh shattered my whole, I'm like, Okay, because I was annoyed, and, and behavior can be annoying. But there was something behind that and saying, well, this is happening because of, would you want to be that person? And I got it. Okay. Uh, now, I had to keep reminding myself of that as I was, but love was performing. Do you understand what I'm saying? When I didn't feel a certain way. I still performed like love would perform. Are, are, are you watching me? And I'm not holding myself up as this great example because there are times uh, when I'm, I have swung and have missed. But in this instance, what I'm telling you, I know it is within us that although we may feel a certain way, uh, we, uh, because of, of an experience that we're having, we still perform. And so my performance was of allegiance and encouragement and the not punishing by withdrawing community. This person wasn't doing anything vicious or violent. It was just, hey, I, I wasn't, the tune that they were singing to me was, was off key and, and off beat. And I wasn't trying to be around, but there were other things behind that. And so to withdraw or to, to treat them in a manner because uh, I was aggravated. Again, we use that term that I didn't, I was too emotionally lazy uh, to withhold my annoyance. No, 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 no. Uh, and, and so with the help of the Holy Ghost and the help of a holy wife, I, I, was, I was able uh, uh, to uh, 
to, to commandeer uh, my emotions and I was able to perform the way love is supposed to perform. And so it's, it's energy that has to be spent, but the Holy Ghost refreshes us. Try. The Lord gives us things like praying for those who bless those who curse you, praying for those who despitefully use you. When we are given to the ministry, prayer, and service to others, the Lord has a way of shielding us from pettiness. Love is such a high, such a broad, such a large thing. When we love, we are expanded into the bigger things of God where now he is able to do things with us that he could not do. Hate is small and petty. Love is huge. When we are loving, the largeness of God is available to us. When we commit to going beyond ourselves to love, to walk in love and saying, Lord, this is what you will do. Jesus loved us enough to die for us. And out of his own mouth in the garden, he said, I actually don't feel like doing this. Um, he said, Father, let this cup pass from me. Jesus was like, I don't feel like doing it. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. That is love performing when he admittedly feels like, I'm, I'm not trying to do this. As he prayed to the Father for strength, love performed. And he died for those that were persecuting him, died for those who were against him. And listen, he died, he died for the Pharisees who, who no doubt were calling for, you'll discover in Acts chapter number, of, uh, I believe it's around ch chapter number 15, um, somewhere in the Council of Jerusalem, you'll find out that in the group of believers, there were members of the Pharisees who got saved. They were still hyper-conservative, and hence the argument uh, of making Gentiles convert to Judaism in order to be saved. And James said, no, they don't have to become a, they can't, they can't live in sin, but they don't have to go through this. And, and so uh, they benefited from the death, burial, and resurrection, although they were there pointing and saying, well, you know what, give us Barabbas and let him go. Jesus died for them as well. He and love performed despite what he felt. If, listen, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. I don't feel like doing this. Nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. And he was strengthened in order to do it. And so the power of our relationship and connectivity, whether it is in the church, whether it's in our homes, I want to stress this to you again. The enemy will fight our relationships and often he will fight We'll start drawing opinions about things and people over things in the long run that don't even matter. And the enemy, he wants those things to, because we can't move ahead. And this is what Paul and, and, and uh, Barnabas figured out. We don't agree, but here's one thing we do agree on. The work of Jesus has to go forward. And if we're not clicking, let us, uh, let us roll with somebody we click with and keep the whole thing clicking and moving forward. They, they didn't break relationship, but they said, I'll work over here and you'll work over here and we'll keep going because the enemy will strain us in relationships. As, as, as you're reading through this over and over again, and we're going to cover some more parts of this on, on next week. Love performing. Love, how is love performing in your life? How uh, is love performing for those that you love? How is the performance of love in our faith community? How, how is the performance of love in Emmanuel? How, how are we loving in 
in, in all of those areas in life and in those groups we are connected to. My uncle used to say this all the time. The power is in the love. The power is in the love. Jesus says, I'm giving you a new commandment. In John, he tells us, love one another like I have loved you. And that fruit of the spirit, this relationship fruit where God is glorified and in his fruits of the spirit, he releases the gifts of the spirit. There will be disagreement. Scripture teaches us how to handle and resolve in there. There's some things we'll, you'll have to agree to disagree. But this uh, the squashing of conflict when ego is removed, when envy is taken out of the picture because love isn't envious. Love does not uh, lift itself above others. Love, love doesn't assume uh, that uh, I am the superior and you are the inferior. No, love is patient. Love is kind. Love and envy. Love doesn't become envious over others' gifts and advantages. But as we see people gifted in an area that we are not, that gift then is for the community. So as, as we feed, as we see these gifts and we feed it with love and, 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 and I'm saying this again, over and over again, because on, on the course of every relationship, there is conversation. There, there are critical conversations. There are those times when uh, we'll share with someone and, 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 uh, to help along the way where there is uh, honest criticism without relationship, without love. Your advice may be correct, but it will be unaccepted. And, you know, it's something that years ago, I, I believe it was, I heard my father saying, I've, and I've heard it before. Um, it, it doesn't matter what you say. It matters what people hear. And so every effort to deliver a message with words seasoned with grace within the environment of love, knowing that the people of God are people of goodwill and that they truly desire, that we truly desire the best for one another. When those, when those times when we can have those critical conversations, they are conversations that upbuild and not tear down. And so uh, tonight I'm going to, I'm going to hit the, the pause button on just those. Uh, love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast, does not elevate oneself in importance. It doesn't painfully desire uh, uh, another's advantages. Love is warm-hearted and considerate. Love is not quick to issue punishment. That's the foundation. As we're continuing next week, continue to read through all those things of how love behaves just over and over again. And as we get to this conversation again next week, and, and we, we build on this and we're going to finish up with what it is uh, that koinonia really means uh, but as we're moving on to the, the next parts of this. And what does love look like performing? How am I showing love? Is, is it the kind of love? Am I making up my own uh, you know, because we have our own ideas and we'll, we'll edit and, uh, and feel justified in it. But if it's not love that looks like love in the scripture, then we got to ask ourselves, are, are we loving uh, the way Jesus wanted us to love? Are we loving one another in that kind of way? And when we are, family God, I am, I am positive that some things we will see God do in our midst because the environment of love is there, that uh, 
that 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 right kind of uh, the, the the right uh, pressure in the atmosphere. Uh, you know how it can be muggy outside, uh, and they measure the barometer, and they say, oh, "Okay, well it's so muggy, it's it's uh, ninety degrees, but it feels like one hundred and five." Uh, when when our atmosphere is full of love, hmm, God demonstrates his power amongst us because when we are loving, we are serving, and God can trust us with big things and with the gifts of the Spirit that we might together glorify God and be pleasing to him and reach the lost that the Lord is calling us to reach. But as we walk in, as we interact with one another, as we are moving forward into, as God, and I'll share this with you, um, the issue is not vision. Uh, the, the Lord has shown. It's, it's rarely... Uh, oftentimes, it's not uh, the what to do, it's the how. And so, as we make ourselves available to each other, as we walk into, even for uh, Emmanuel in this, this new phase, this is, this is uh, six months in, uh, a little more than six months into a new pastor after everything before that this this moment uh, is is full of everything that has gone on before it and so as we are loving one another as we are staying connected to one another as we are driving forward and and desiring the best one for another and being available one to another and walking in the koinonia living in the life of faith to be hungry, to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord, he begins to open and shed those and drop those gifts on us. And so that's the heart that's needed because we need uh, uh, laborers in the vineyard. I, I can't remember who was praying about that, but I heard it. I was saying, yes, Lord, uh, laborers, laborers, laborers. There, there's, there are different things that need to be done in so many areas. And it's the heart of love that drives us to that. And God will equip us with everything that we need, uh, that he would be glorified. He will meet our needs. Uh, he will show himself strong in our midst. Love is the key. Love is the key. The koinonia is the key. The fellowship is the key. The Lord bless you uh, today. Um, I am through uh, with this portion of my presentation, and if there uh, are any questions uh, uh, or something that someone has wanted to raise, I can uh, do that. I can also, we will, I can upload um, the the notes that we have that you see uh, so far and that information will be available for you on Sunday where to log into where you can download um, the, the uh, presentation so far. All right, the Lord bless you. If there are no questions, as I see those that are on Zoom, there are some on YouTube, there's some on the app, there's some on the, uh, I'm looking at all of the mechanisms, there's some on the, the website. Um, we thank the Lord for you tonight uh, and the, trusting that God will continue to bless and to keep. Uh, as we are closing tonight, uh, let us bow our heads uh, for a word of prayer on this evening. As we're closing today, Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you. You are the lover of our souls. And in this love, we seek to glorify you by behaving in the manner that you would behave. And so we extend ourselves. We give ourselves over to this life of love, this love walk. 
that all of it is centered in and made possible by your act of love, where you died for us, where you gave your life that we might be free. And we are grateful. And so we walk in this way of love. We participate in this great love that we enjoy. Love shown to us. We continue to show one to another. We ask, Father, that your hand would be upon us. Your hand be upon us, Father. That we might do your will. Do those things that are pleasing to you. This is our desire. This is our desire, that we would walk together in harmony, that your name would be glorified. Bless us that we might be a blessing. Heal God, deliver, touch Lord Jesus in your name, God. We lift up Sister Ramona and her family as she travels. We, we lift up the Hawkins family before you right now. We thank you for what you are doing in the lives of your people. That you are healing and you are delivering. You are the mighty God. And your name is praised. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. Heaven smile upon you and may he keep you in Jesus' name. We'll see you soon.